We have an emailer who asked, and he asked that, I embrace the progress of technology wholeheartedly, but at some point, don't we run the risk of technology becoming too human and realizing that they are modern slaves and face a possible revolt? Well, he brings up an interesting issue uh, regarding the legal rights of machines. And uh, nobody worries that about that much today. But it's not going to be a clear distinction between uh, human and machine as we get to the 2030s and 2040s. In fact, even a biological human that was born in the, in the ordinary course uh, will have their brains enhanced with non-biological intelligence. And ultimately, that non-biological component, a portion of our intelligence, will be far more capable than the biological portion. And so, you know, is that a machine? Is that a human? Uh, we'll have machines where there's no biological component, but they're very precise copies of, of biological people, and they're going to act in exactly the same way. It's going to be all mixed up. You're not going to be able to walk in a room and say, okay, humans on the left side of the room, machines on the right. It's, it's going to be very much an integration of, non, of biological and non-biological intelligence, just as it is today, except that the non-biological portion is going to get a lot more capable. And ultimately, they're going to press for their own legal rights. Uh, and there's already a lot of interesting discussion about that. Uh, and, you know, I think that that will happen, uh, you know, particularly when you can have an entity that's completely non-biological that's just as convincing in terms of their uh, sophistication and complexity of their emotions as humans. And emotional intelligence is not some little sideshow to our intelligence. It's actually the cutting edge. Because in terms of the logical, analytical things we do, machines can already do a pretty good job of that. Very few mathematicians could hold up to, let's say, Mathematica. And recently, mathematical theorems have been done as a collaboration between the human mathematician and the machine. But emotion is actually the most complicated and sophisticated thing we do. But ultimately, we will understand that as well. And these future machines will have emotional intelligence. One of the arguments or things you bring out in your books are the fact that the ability for a brain to be downloaded into a synthetic body or a version two body, as you call it. What do you mean by that? Well, as I mentioned, we're going to be merging with non-biological intelligence. We'll have nanobots go inside our bodies and brains, and uh, ultimately we'll have billions of nanobots and other ways in which we're going to be in very direct touch with non-biological intelligence. So then my intelligence is a combination of both my biological intelligence, all the ion channels and neurotransmitters in my brain, and all of this non-biological machine intelligence. Now, the machine part of the intelligence, can clearly we can clearly download the contents of that easily. We do that all the time with our machines. Machines can share their knowledge, that their states uh, at electronic speeds, which is actually a million times faster than human brains can, can share knowledge. Uh, but ultimately, we'll be able to tap into the biological uh, patterns as well. We'll be able to have these nanobots scan the state of our ion channels, neurotransmitter concentrations, interneuronal connection patterns, and extract that information. Uh, but principally, I don't see that as the, the, the real quintessential scenario. I see us becoming essentially more and more non-biological. And that non-biological intelligence can download knowledge and skills, as we saw in the matrix. We do that all the time with our, with our computers. I and mean, we spent years training one research computer to understand human speech. We trained it like a child. We patiently corrected its errors. We exposed it to thousands of hours of speech. And over years, it did a better and better job. And finally, it was commercially viable. Now, if you want your computer to understand human speech, you don't have to go through those years of training like we do have to do with every human child. You can just do load the evolved patterns of this one research computer that learned its lessons. It's called loading the software. Machines can take their learning, their skills, and share them at electronic speeds, which is a million times faster than we can share our knowledge with language. Although the fact that we can share it at all gives us uh, one up, gives us a leg up on other species. So there you go.